I hope that everyone here is as full of wonder as I am about the gospel story for today. Because it tells a rather astonishing story. It tells a story that is memorable. It tells a story that is worth telling over and 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 over. And it never gets old. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. And it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder about all the ground that gets covered in the story. You see, if you notice, Mary Magdalene does an awful lot of running back and forth in the Gospel lesson. You know, John's Gospel sort of glosses over these journeys, but they're definitely in there. Take note, he says, you know, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, and then she ran and went, and then she gets Peter and John to come back with her to the tomb, and after she sees the risen Lord, she goes back and tells the disciples about what she saw. That's four trips in one morning. Now, we don't know exactly how far away from the tomb Mary was when she was in Jerusalem, but it probably took at least a few minutes to get there. And I wonder, what was going through Mary's head as she went back and forth that morning? Y'all ever wonder about that? You see, Mary didn't start out on some early stroll like you and I might take on a crisp, <laughs> clean spring morning. No, as John's Gospel tells us, it was dark when she set out. Now, she may have been making her way in the, in the dim light of the Paschal moon, but John makes a point of saying that when she set out, it was dark. And whenever John tells us it was dark, whenever John's Gospel says that, there's a deeper meaning there. And it means it was not a good morning. Her Lord was dead. Or at least she thought. And she was walking in darkness. She was walking in the kind of darkness that Jesus was talking about when he said, He who walks in darkness does not know where he goes. And I wonder if Mary really knew where she was going that morning. A few years, years ago, I had a friend who died in a car accident just a couple of blocks away from his house. When I got the news, I went over to visit his house with some other friends. And for some reason, in our grief, we decided to, to walk down to the corner where the accident had happened. And there wasn't anything there to see, really. And if, if you really had seen us standing there staring out at the intersection, you might have said that we looked lost, that we looked like we didn't know where we were going. Because grief can do that to you. And Mary was grieving. I imagine that she was walking along almost sort of in a daze, driven by nothing other than her grief-filled desire to just sit and be at the place where she thought Jesus' dead body was. So imagine how horrified she must have been when she got to the tomb and saw that it was empty. I can't even begin to imagine the nightmarish thoughts that probably were running through her head as she made her way back to tell Peter and John. Anger, disgust, fear, desperation. I think all of those, maybe a combination of them, were sort of swirling around in her stomach as she was walking back to where Peter and John were. And I wonder if she was really thinking about where she was going. I wonder if she silently cursed whomever she thought took Jesus' body. I wonder if it was still dark at that moment. And then she had to break the bad news. And if you've ever had to be the bearer of bad news, you know how bad it can be. And at least, it seems, Mary had some bad news to share. But Peter and John didn't hesitate. They set out running. And it seems, Mary went running right along with them. Back to the garden. Back to the tomb. Back to where it looked like things had gone from bad 
to worse. And I wonder, did she really want to go? I imagine if someone stopped her along the road, the conversation would have gone something like this. Hey, lady, where are you going to in such a hurry? She would have said, to a garden. What's there? Nothing now, but Jesus' Jesus' body used to be there. Well, so you'd like to be where Jesus is? Yes! Well, do you know where he is now? No. So you don't really know where you're going. I wonder if the apparent darkness of the situation finally occurred to Mary when they made it back to the tomb. I wonder if Mary stood there weeping because she knew that there was nowhere else to go. That's why I think that when Peter and John left, she just stayed where she was, weeping. She had followed Jesus to the bitter end, and now it seemed like he really was fully gone. And there was nowhere else for her to go. And I wonder, even though for her in that moment everything seemed dark, was the sun just beginning to come up? And then she hears a voice. Through her grief, through her pain, through her despair, a simple word. And all of a sudden she looks up and she sees that the sun has indeed risen. And right there, right in front of her, is Jesus. The one who said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And he was right. Mary had followed Jesus as far as she thought that she could. She had thought all was darkness. But at that moment, she wasn't in the darkness anymore. She's standing there in the garden in the clear light of day with the risen Savior who is the true light of the world. And what does he tell her to do? Go. Go and tell the others. And off she goes. I cannot imagine a more astounding chain and change of events. She started the morning thinking that she was going to go grieve at Jesus' tomb. And before most of the world had begun to stir, she was on her way, bearing a message that would change the world. It all started back then in the tomb, in the garden, with Mary making her way to tell the others. And here we are. And as she made her way, I wonder, I wonder if she ran frantically or walked with a steady stride. I wonder if she ever stopped to consider whether the other disciples would believe her or not. I wonder if she gave any thought to exactly what she would say when she would make her announcement. I wonder about these things because I also want to share the good news of Jesus' resurrection. And it seems like Mary did a pretty good job of, of doing it, so I want to know what she said. But there's one thing about that morning that I don't wonder about. Mary knew where she was going when she left that garden. She had her marching orders, and she knew where she was supposed to be. It's fair to say that her greatest desire was to be where Jesus was. And since she had just seen Jesus risen from the dead, then it stands to reason that she left that garden with the confidence that Jesus could never, ever be taken away from her again. Death wasn't a strong enough barrier. So there was nowhere she could go where Jesus wouldn't be. And this is where we share something in common with Mary. We know where we're supposed to be. We don't have to wonder. 
We're supposed to be where Jesus is. And there's nowhere that we can be where Jesus isn't. We're supposed to be sharing the good news that the love of God knows no bounds. Not darkness. Not death. Not even the walls of this building. So, when we go out from this place, we can be sure that the risen Jesus is there. And knowing that, I wonder, where will we go? Amen. Amen.